Former President Trump took some time out of his Florida rally last night to talk about the charges facing his company and its CFO, but in the process of railing against the charges, he actually never disputed them. Instead, he appeared to corroborate the basic facts of the case. They go after good, hardworking people for not paying taxes on a company car. Company car. You didn't pay tax on the car or a company apartment. You used an apartment because you need an apartment because you have to travel too far where your house is and didn't pay tax. Or education for your grandchildren. I don't even know. Do you have to? But does anybody know the answer to that stuff? Uh, yes, uh, sometimes the nation's tax code can be confusing, but let's revisit what Trump said during the 2016 campaign. I think nobody knows more about taxes than I do, maybe in the history of the world. Uh, juxtapose that with the sound you just heard a few moments ago. Donald Trump biographer Michael D'Antonio joins me now. Uh, his books about the former president include The Truth About Trump. Uh, Michael, uh, that is classic Trump, right? Uh, you just make it up as you go along. Well, it sure is classic Trump. And, you know, I think the IRS knows whether you're supposed to pay taxes on tuition paid for your grandchildren by your employer. And I think the answer is yes. <laughs> you know, the the stuff that these guys did, you know, from keeping two sets of books to, you know, these exorbitant fringe benefits that they call fringe benefits, but are really half the pay that Alan Weisselberg received on an annual basis. It, it's all so obvious. You know, I the thing that really strikes, strikes me about all of this is how unsophisticated it is. This is just simple greed, um, the kind of things that almost anyone could imagine. And the minute they went looking, they found it. Yeah, it's as if his employees were uh, paid with a wink and a nod, uh, it seems. Uh, and Michael Cohen told CNN he knows how this is going to play out for Weisselberg because he lived through it. Let's listen. What you have right now is Alan Weisselberg's head on the chopping block. And do you think that Donald Trump will protect him? Well, if Alan looks back at what happened to me, the answer is an emphatic no. So is Weisselberg going to be the latest fall guy, do you think? You know, he really is acting as if he is going to go down with the ship. You know, and I think this is astounding given Michael Cohen's example. Um, but there's a, another thing that I notice in the president's or the former president's complaints and his idea that, well, they're going after really good people and they would only be going after me uh, because of political motivations. Well, the big problem for him is that he invited all of this. He ran for president in the first place as a publicity stunt. He wanted to amp up his visibility and increase his bottom line. He never intended to be elected president. And then when he became president, journalists started digging into the facts of his wealth, which has always been in doubt. And then people that he really hurt, that he steamrollered over the years, leaked documents to the New York Times that gave the truth about his taxes to, for the world to see. Faced with all of that, the prosecutors had no choice but to go after him. So yeah. this idea that this is political is crazy. He brought it on himself. There's a practices that have been going on for more than a dozen years, and he, he's getting what he deserves. And, and what's with all these ta uh, Trump associates having uh, tax problems and facing tax charges over the years? Well, this is obviously a way of doing business for an organization that more resembles organized crime than an ordinary corporation. You know, the other person who I think is in peril is Ivanka Trump. One of the things that Alan Weisselberg is in trouble for is taking money as a contractor and then claiming self-employed status so that he can get some of the retirement benefits that the tax code allows for self-employed people. Well, we know that Ivanka Trump got quite significant sums paid to her as non-employee compensation that freed the Trump organization from paying part of her taxes. And it put her in a status that 
I think the IRS would have lots of questions about. So these folks don't know how to play the game straight. I think everything they do is crooked. And Michael, let me ask you, let's go back to last night's rally and what Trump said about the Capitol rioter who was fatally shot by police, Ashley Babbitt. Let's listen. And by the way, who shot Ashley Babbitt? Who shot Ashley Babbitt? Who? Who shot Ashley Babbitt? We all saw the hand. We saw the gun. I spoke to her mother the other day, an incredible woman. She's just devastated, like, like it happened yesterday. Devastated. You know, if that were on the other side, the person that did the shooting would be strung up and hung. That is just so sick. Does Trump understand that his election lie is the reason people like Ashley Babbitt were inside the Capitol? Just, uh, just he, incredible stuff, Michael. He has to know it. And so his lies told over a period of months propelled Ashley Babbitt to be there that day. And she was literally climbing over people to get through the broken glass into the House chamber. It's known who shot her. Uh, it's been investigated and reviewed. I think that officer has suffered trauma. Babbitt's family has suffered trauma. She lost her life. For him to get on stage and bellow like that as if there's some deep, dark secret is appalling. And, and, yeah, so I, I mean, I, and I hate to bring it up on July 4th because we should all be coming together as a country. But when I saw that, it was so infuriating because she would be alive, very likely, would, almost certainly would be alive today had it not been for Trump and his lies. I mean, that is just the truth. She would be alive to be more than 100 police officers who hadn't suffered injuries. Uh, look at your comment about our country coming together on Independence Day is spot on. You know, we deserve to be united. This person has divided us for years. I think we have to cover what he does in a, at least a minimal basis so that we're aware of the terrible things that are being sown among the populace by this former president. But I can feel that our country is calmer, happier, more cohesive six months into the Biden administration. And I think that you can feel it too. And if only we can keep making this progress and keep being Americans together, maybe we'll put this dark period behind us. Yeah, I mean, literally anybody could be in the White House and we would feel more united as a country. I, I just, I hate to play that on the 4th of July, but it's just so appalling uh, what he said last night. And it's unfortunate, we're, you know, that we have to fact check this kind of stuff. But Michael D'Antonio, thanks as always uh, for being on with us. We appreciate it. Uh, Probably more Thank to discuss, you. but we won't, we won't have any more time. This